Good morning and welcome to St. John's Broad Creek. Welcome to our digital church. We are in the season of Lent and so our service begins in silence. Let me invite you into a moment of silence and then our service will begin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the, your, the Lord, your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Whatever harm I may have done in all my life, in all your wide creation, if I cannot repair it, I beg you to repair it. And then there are all the wounded, the poor, the deaf, the lonely, and the old, whom I have roughly dismissed, as if I were not one of them. Where I have wronged them by, by it, and cannot make amends, I ask you to comfort them to overflowing. And where there are lives I may have withered around me, or lives of strangers far or near that I have destroyed in blind complicity, and I cannot find them or have no way to serve them. Remember them, I beg you to remember them when winter is over, and all your unimaginable, unimaginable promises burst into song on death's bare branches. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. with you and also with you. let us pray O God whose glory it is always to have mercy be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word Jesus Christ your son 
who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 17, beginning, beginning at the first verse. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell to it on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for, your, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 22, beginning at verse 22, please read responsively by whole verse. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in all poverty, in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. A reading from Romans 4. For the, promise, for the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, 
he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mark 8, 31 through 38. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me 
and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Journey is a metaphor that is often used, perhaps overused, to talk about living a life of faith. Our journey as Episcopalians who follow Jesus regularly leads us through the seasons of the church year. As we travel, we notice that these seasons have biblical themes that ground them. One of the foundational themes of Lent is covenant. Covenants made, covenants broken, covenants restored, covenants fulfilled. Last week, we heard the story of God's covenant with Noah, and we waded through the waters to the covenant of baptism, just as the flood waters delivered Noah from his foes and vindicated Noah's faith in God. Likewise, the waters of baptism are the deliverance of Christians. Baptism is the beginning of our covenantal relationship with God. In baptism, we commit to following Jesus Christ. The Catechism in our Book of Common Prayer defines covenant as a relationship initiated by God to which a body of people responds in faith. In the stories of the Old Testament, God initiated multiple covenants with the Hebrew people. They are summarized in what our Book of Common Prayer calls the Old Covenant. God promised that the Hebrew people would be God's people and that they would bring all the nations of the world to God. In response, God required that God's chosen people would be faithful, to love justice, to do mercy, and to walk humbly with their God. It is no coincidence that we promise to do the same things in our baptismal covenant. This week, the biblical narrative takes us to the covenant that began God's special relationship with the Hebrew people. God promised Abraham a child, a child through whom the covenant would continue, thus signaling God's intention to keep the covenant into the distant future. God announces that a child will be born to old Abraham and barren Sarah. We learn later in the story that Sarah roars with laughter when she learns of the promise God made to Abraham. Yet God fulfills God's promises in God's own way. What was thought to be impossible and absurd turns out to be precisely God's plan. In Romans, Paul riffs on the story of Abraham. Abraham is offered as the prime example of God's faithful and yet strange ways with humankind. Paul reminds us God keeps promises, and God does so in ways that human beings cannot predict or control. For Christians, Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah, the fulfillment of God's covenant. At the time of Jesus' birth, the Jewish people had been waiting for hundreds upon hundreds of years for the Messiah to be born among them. Jewish scholars had spent those centuries poring over the words of prophets, and although there were competing schools of thought, most people believed they knew what their Messiah would be like. He would be born in Bethlehem. He would be a wise and charismatic teacher. He would be blessed by God to work miracles. And he would be a strong military leader like King David, who would rid the land of Roman occupiers and restore the nation to its former glory. In our gospel story from Mark, poor Peter was set up by the stories of his ancestors. In the verses just prior to what we heard read, Jesus asked Peter, who do you say 
that I am. Peter replied correctly, you are the Messiah. Peter used the right words, but he did not know what he was saying. So when Jesus began speaking of suffering and death, Peter was sure Jesus was wrong and rebuked Jesus. Mark does not tell us what Peter said, but we can take a stab at it. What? Are you freaking kidding me, Jesus? Did you not read the job description? You are supposed to lead us into battle. Jesus responds to Peter's rebuke with the strongest possible condemnation. Jesus associates Peter's understanding of the Messiah with Satan. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. We all know from our own experience just how tempting it is to do what is popular or cool and to ignore what we know to be good in the eyes of God. We have an obsession with going to the right school, driving the right car, and wearing the right shoes. We are far more concerned with what everybody else thinks than we are with listening to the yearning of our hearts and to God's covenantal call on our lives. Throughout scripture, God is clear. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. God decides what is divine and what is not. We do not get to negotiate or define the terms of our relationship with God. God initiates covenants. God loves us and seeks to be in relationship with us from the moment we begin to be. Our job is to follow. Yesterday, members of your vestry and I attended a vestry workshop offered by the Episcopal Diocese of Washington. Our facilitator, the Reverend Dr. Frank Wade, said something that really stuck with me. Frank said, we call ourselves followers of Jesus because we don't know where we are going. <laughs> Faith is about trusting God to lead. Abraham and Sarah are offered as an example of those who trusted God's promises, who followed God, even when the destination, the promise, sounded absurd. Mm -hmm. We do not get to choose how God will answer our prayers. God's strange, glorious, and often humorous ways are not our ways. Jesus invites us to take up our cross and to follow him and to die. To die to self, die to our old ideas, die to self-reliance. To deny oneself is not some sort of contrived humility. We do not follow Jesus by demeaning ourselves. God calls us to do the very best we can with the gifts and abilities God has given to us. To deny oneself means to keep our priorities in harmony with the covenant Jesus asks, asks us to keep. To love God and to love what God has made. This is the Christian journey. Our job is to follow. Please join me as we celebrate our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and join you in tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Rise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you join humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, especially Thomas, Elma, Sandra, Mary Jo, Sarah, Linda, Lee and Becky, Wolfgang, Billy, Benji, Jordan, John, Patricia, Alma, for all who are anxious about when they will get their COVID-19 vaccine, and those who re we remember now either silently or aloud. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children long, longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. We pray for the repose of the soul of Israel Angel Angle Johnson, friend of the Fletcher family. Lead us, to the lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace, friends. We are delighted that you are with us today in worship here at St. John's in our digital church. Just a few announcements today. Wednesdays during Lent, we have our usual morning worship and Bible study at 930 in the morning. And our evenings during Lent, we are doing a Lenten study on Wednesday evenings. We are having conversations around race and racism. You can look in your email for links to both of these events. Um, make sure you, if you're planning on coming to Wednesday evening, there's um, a reading that will be included in that, a little bit of a, something to kind of prime the pump for our conversation. So please make sure you take a look at that um, just a little bit. It won't take you long, just take a look before, um, before Wednesday evening, if you want to attend those events and you are not receiving uh, the invitations via email, reach out to our office. You can find a ways to connect to us on our website, www.stjohnsbroadcreek.org. It's time for our closing prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. From what we know to what we have yet to discover. God is calling us on. From all that binds us to the truth which frees us. God is calling us on. From the blessing of today to the possibilities of tomorrow. God is calling us on. Amen. Life is short. And we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.
us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.